In this sponsored tutorial, we're going to check out the Medulla Gallery plugin, which is by far one of the best gallery plugins I've seen for WordPress. So if you're thinking of making a gallery, check out this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. And with all sponsored videos, I show you all the features and functionality available so you can make a decision on whether or not you want to buy this plugin, and then you can decide if it's right for your business. Well, let's get started. We're going to use this site for our demo. We built this one about a year ago on the channel, a complete walkthrough of how to build this site from zero. I have linked to that in the description down below if you want to see how we did that using Astro Theme and Brizzy. And now we're going to add an inspiration type page. This is a website about investing, and I want a page where it kind of showcases what you could do or accomplish if you invest well and basically have a nice retirement, something like that. And we're going to use Medulla to create the gallery for that. And the first thing we want to do is install the Medulla plugin. So let's go to the dashboard. Let's go to plugins and add new. And let's search for Medulla. This is the Medulla plugin right here. Has nearly 300 five star reviews, four and a half stars on average, but nearly five stars. 80,000 plus active installs updated three days ago, compatible with the current version of WordPress. And so all that checks out, we can go ahead and install it. This is the free version. There's also a pro version. You have to install the free one before you can install the pro, or that's not true. You can install the pro first, but then you still have to install the free before it'll work. So we wanna have the free version installed, which we do right here. And the biggest limitation of the free version is that you can't have videos in your galleries and you can't have more than 20 images in your galleries. Aside from those two things, the free version is very, very capable. So it might be all you need the free version. We're going to use the pro version in this video so you can check out all the features it has, but keep in mind the free version can do a whole lot and it might be all you need. I'm going to click on add new to upload the pro version, which I downloaded from their website onto my hard drive. And it's right here. Install now and activate. And if you're installing these on a live site, you might want to back up your site first, just in case. It's pretty rare stuff goes wrong these days, but just in case something goes wrong, you want to have a backup. I have linked to the tutorial in the description down below to help you back up your site if you need help with that. We need to add a license key. Now that the pro version is installed, so let's click here and add our license key. Let's just paste it in here. Click on Save Changes, and then Activate License. And this license is active forever. I'm going to dismiss these notices. I'm going to not allow tracking because it's the demo site. If you do allow tracking, it helps developers make their plugins better. I updated that already. Okay, there we go. Now we have Medulla installed. It's on the left-hand side here. If we go to galleries, let's make a gallery before we do anything else. Let's go to add new and let's make a gallery. Let's call this inspiration. And we're going to add some images. You can add these images from your media library by clicking on select from library, or you can also click on upload image files, which allows you to upload files directly from your hard drive. It will add them to your media library as well, but it will upload them directly to here. So you don't have to go through the media library upload step. It's not a huge deal going through that or not, but it's just a little shortcut by clicking here. You just pick them on your hard drive. I'm going to just quickly find a bunch of images that we can add into here for inspiration, and I'll be right back. I'm back with some images. Now let's upload them. I have them in their own separate folder to make my life easier. Just gonna select them all and click open. Now we have our nine inspirational images. We all draw inspiration from different things. Some of us like a little cabin, a rustic little cabin on the lake. Some like donkeys, some like airplanes, some like RVing, some like sleeping with the fish. I mean, swimming with the fish. Anyhow, these are the images we're going to have in our gallery. And now we're going to customize it. There's a lot of options to make this gallery look exactly how you want. And there's even some options you're not going to find anywhere else. So let's check those out. The first thing we can do is drag and drop these images to rearrange them. Pretty standard stuff. We can hover over them and click on the pencil. And we can edit the title, the alt text, caption text, the alignment of the image. A URL to have this image linked to someplace when it's clicked on. You can open image links in a new browser by checking that box and you can add a filter. We're going to get to that a little bit later. So let's just close this and, and clicking on the switching arrow icon allows you to replace the image with something else. So if you don't like that particular image, you can swap it with another one and it's swapped. It's that easy. I'm going to keep our donkey in there and we can change the gallery type. 
down here for the gallery type drop down. Currently it's the creative gallery. I'm going to choose custom grid because I really like this feature. It allows you to resize images and take up more or less space depending on how much space you want to take up. You can just drag and drop and now this image is bigger. I want to have this image be four squares. Everything else needs to be readjusted to that. And I think the, let's see, the camping one should be four squares too. Maybe six, maybe, maybe the whole bottom. That's a nice wide image. Let's see if we can fit it in there. Sometimes you gotta adjust it to fit just right. There we go, that's pretty good. Let's put the, the manta ray back there. There we go. Some nice images, maybe this one's gonna be too wide. And you can readjust it and specify exactly how you want your gallery to display using the custom grid feature. And that's a feature I've not seen anywhere else. I'm not a gallery expert, but I think that's a pretty unique and cool feature. There's other gallery types like columns, which is just columns. There's even more options with the pro version. We have the pro version activated, so I'm not sure why that's not appearing, but we'll look into that. We can change our column type. So for under the column section, we can have four columns or just two columns. Choose however many columns you want. And it's not gonna reflect up here, it's just gonna reflect on the actual page where this gallery is appearing. For custom grid, the columns option disappears because you don't need columns for custom grid. And it remembers what we set up earlier. And the spacing between the pictures can be adjusted. That's called the gutter. Currently it's set to 10. We can make it bigger, we can make it Smaller, right down to nothing. No space between the images at all. I'm going to add five. Five pixels between the images. The thumbnail size of 500 is usually more than good enough. If you wonder what any of these options are, and I don't explain them as well as you'd like, hover over the question mark and you can see what they are using these tooltips. We have a max image count, which shows the max, which is the max number of images shown in the gallery. If it's if there's nothing in here, it just shows all the images. We have a Powered By. They have an affiliate program, so you can use the Powered By option, turn that on, there'll be a little Powered By link below the gallery, and you'll be able to earn affiliate commission if someone buys through your link. I'm gonna keep that turned off for now, and I'm gonna save this gallery and add it to a page. That will customize it further. So let's update the gallery. We have a nice little short code here. I'm gonna just copy this short code. I'm gonna create a new page called Inspiration. Get our short code block. Paste the short code in there. Click on publish, publish, view it. There's our gallery. Look at these great overlays. Not quite what we're looking for, right? We can adjust all that, so don't worry about that. If we go back into our gallery, we click on the pencil icon. This is the title that's being shown on top of the images in our example right here. So if you wanna have titles, like rustic cabin for this one. Click on save and close, click on update gallery. Come back out here, refresh. We now have a rustic cabin. And this is the hover effect that we have chosen. There are many different hover effects. We'll get to those in a little bit as well. Let's look at the second way we can add this to a page. We can add the gallery to have it pop up when you click on something. If we copy this second short code here, let's add Shouldn't have closed that new page. So let's put this in here. Click on update, refresh. Now if someone clicks here, it shows our gallery in a light box. It doesn't have all the nice setup we had when we just used the first short code. We had our nice custom grid layout, which it doesn't have when you click on the link. But that link option, you can also have it associated with an image. So you just have one image, and they click on that image, then it shows the whole gallery in the light box like we just saw, using the second option here. People can also click on these, and it goes to that same gallery option as well. And there's different ways we can set up the gallery too. We'll get to that in a little bit. A lot of options to cover. Lightbox and links. Open images in Lightbox, that's what we just saw. We clicked on an image and it opened in what's called a Lightbox. We can have it be no link, so nothing happens. You can have a direct link to the image. So if we do that one, it will go 
to the image and nothing else. There's no arrows, there's no nothing. It's just the image in your uploads folder. So we have to click on back to get back to our gallery page. That's not an option you use very often. You can go to the attachment page. This is a page that WordPress creates whenever an image is uploaded. Click on this, it goes to that image's page. That is uh, a pain. Sometimes these pages can be indexed. There was a bug in Yoast SEO a year or two ago that actually indexed all these pages with thin content. A lot of sites were hammered in the rankings because of that. So attachment pages don't make a lot of sense to me, but they exist. And that's how we can open an image on the attachment page. We can loop the navigation. So if you're in the light box and click on the arrows, you can either loop through all of the images again and again and again, or you can just go through them once. Keep this off and just go through them once. You have navigation arrows or not. Those are pretty handy. You can show the image title or not. In the light box, this is all specific to light box when someone clicks on the image. Show the title or not, show the caption or not. I know you know how to read, so you can just hover over these tool tips or even just the, the name of them implies what they do. And there's lots and lots of options for you to set up for your light box and make it just exactly what you want. Filters allows you to filter your images. So I'm going to add a filter called vacation and maybe one called uh, the wild. Sure. So we have two filters, vacation and the wild. We can choose different ways to display them. First, let's just see what these actually do and what they are. Click on update gallery, come back out here and we have our filters, all vacation, the wild. Click on these and nothing happens. It shows the images with those filters applied. Once we create the filters, we have to actually apply them to our images. So we're gonna click on all of them, scroll down and choose our filter. This one I'm gonna call vacation, save and close. This one will be vacation, save and close. This one's gonna be the wild. You get the idea. I'm just gonna fast forward while I add all these filters. Okay, all added, update gallery, refresh out here, and we click on our filters, and it shows just the images that belong to that filter, that have the filter applied. You can even have more than one image, or so you can have an image appear with more than one filter. This camping one down here with the tents, it's both in the wild and in the vacation. That's how filters work. And you can customize your filters with these options down here. And I know you know how to read. I'm not going to read all these for you. I'm just going to show you what I think are the coolest features. The filter link style, which has a preview right down here. This is what it currently is, our filter link. There's all kinds of different styles with a preview right down below. Just letting people know which filter they're on. Those are pretty cool. Change the colors for those. We can change the positioning, a little typo right there. We can change the positioning for the filter buttons themselves or filter links. And you can have collapsible filters, which is for mobile. So that makes it more mobile friendly. So that's our filters. Our captions are text that is associated with the image. So it's going to add a caption to this big one here. This is the best vacation spot. Save and close. Now we have a caption. Let's update gallery and see where that is without changing any settings. We see it's nowhere at all until we hover. Then it's right down here. And there's a new filter effect as well. Apply it up there. It's pretty hot. Okay, so captions. So the caption settings are not just for the captions, also for the titles. You can show and hide the title, show and hide gallery titles, change the font for all those. You can hide the caption if you want to. You can change the size. I'm going to keep everything as it is because I like, I like how it's all set up. I like how that all looks. But there we can customize captions and titles. Under social, we can enable social links. Let's turn on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and let's save this. Let's actually make this a different color. Let's make it dark gray. Save this. Refresh out here. And we see our social links appearing on the images. Made them darker because the hover color is quite bright. 
I'm just going to quickly change all these titles to make them fit a little better. I'm going to fast forward while I do that. All right, all updated. Come back out here, looks a lot better. I'm gonna actually reduce the size a little bit on our captions tab, because it's a little bit big. Let's make this a font size of 16. Might be a little small. That's fine, it's fine how it is. Now we don't have our text overlaying the entire image all the time, but now we can see our social share buttons a lot better on each of these images as we hover over them. So that's the social share buttons. And we can also change the size of the social share icons and the gutter, which is the space between them. The loading effects, this is what you see when the image or when the gallery is loading and it takes a little time to load. If I refresh out here, refresh is so fast, can't even see a loading effect. But it would be basically just a, like a little spinny icon or a little line that fills up depending on which loading effect they're using. It doesn't say here, maybe in the documentation it says which loading effect it is. Yeah, it doesn't show which effect it is. All you have to know is there is an effect and if you see the loading effect on your site and you wanna change it, this is the tab you can change it on. Lots of hover effects as well. You can change the cursor icon. You'll notice when we hover over this right here, this is what our current gallery looks like. Has a little magnifying glass for the icon, title with an underline, our caption, and our social icons. We can change a lot of this stuff. Change it to a pointer, or crosshairs, or even resize two. Even resize one. So you can change what your icon looks like. You can change the hover effect. There are 40 different hover effects. I'm gonna go to the very last one. That's pretty neat. How the text adjusts as well. I like that. So you can choose any one of these and see the preview down below. Layla's the name of my dog. So I'm gonna stick with Layla. And we can change the hover color. If we want to have lighter text, we wanna have darker hover cover, color probably. It doesn't change in real time on here. We have to actually save it and see what it looks like on the actual gallery. So let's update that, refresh out here. Now we see our darker color when we hover. It makes a lot more sense because we have lighter text. And our social icons are not here. On our options, it says, this effect is compatible with title and description. So if you want to have the social icons appear, we can't use Layla. That one's only good with the title. This one is good with social icons, so we'll use this one. Sorry, Layla. You're not gonna be in this video. Poor girl, refresh, hover, social icons. I should change those to white again. And right now, I think we have a pretty good looking gallery. It's taken a long time to make because I've been talking the whole time. But if you're not talking the whole time and you're just choosing the settings you want, it goes pretty quick to make a great looking gallery. The loading effects that hover effects, style, allows you to change border styles and shadow styles. I'm gonna add a shadow. Why not? I like small shadows. I'm not gonna add a border. This would be around each individual image. So if I refresh out here, we see a slight shadow appearing around every single image. So it stands off on the page a little bit. I think our images have very nicely defined edges, so we don't need to have a border. But if you do want a border, these are the border settings. Super easy, drag and drop, or just pick colors from the color picker. Speed up allows you to speed up the gallery. This requires a separate speed up extension. We'll look at the extensions in just a minute. They allow you to power up your gallery, basically. And with the speed up extension, you get access to short pixels image optimization. This does not mean you have to have a short pixel account. You don't need a short pixel account for this to work. You just need to get the speed up extension and it will leverage short pixels account for you or leverage their own short pixel account to make this work for you. And you also have an unlimited CDN with a stack path, also no extra cost to you. That's Medulla's CDN that they set up specifically for use with this plugin. 
And a CDN is a content delivery network. So instead of having your images served from wherever your hosting account is, say it's in the USA, then someone from Japan visits your site, the images will be loaded from the USA and served to Japan, which takes a little longer. With a CDN, there's servers all around the world. And so there might be a server in Japan itself. So it will detect that the person visiting your site is from Japan, then they'll load the images from the server in Japan, making it faster. We also have lazy load. Turn that on or off. Lazy load means the images that are on the screen when the screen loads will be loaded. The ones that are below the screen will not be. So for example, if this gallery was taller and we had images below the fold, meaning below my loadable screen, like this, for example, this image is a little bit down there. But if there's full images down below the screen, they will not load until I scroll down to them. And that, again, makes your gallery load faster because it doesn't have to load all the images right when we load the page. Responsive options are what we need for mobile. You can have custom responsiveness. It has responsiveness out of the box. You can make adjustments here. On the tablet, it'll shrink the gallery down to two columns. On mobile, down to one column. And then we also have custom CSS. This allows you to add custom CSS. So if you want to have custom styles or custom whatever that you can create with CSS applied to your gallery, this is where you put your CSS code. And this is the ID for the gallery to use in your CSS. So that is all the stuff that comes with Medula without installing other extensions. We can install lots of extensions. So let's take a look at what those are. It's going to command click or control click on extensions to open that in a new tab. And these are the extensions that we have available to us. These do come at an additional cost. So if we go to their pricing page, let's just go to medula, wp-medula.com forward slash pricing, we see the list of extensions that are available with each plan. So if you get just the starter plan, you get these four extensions, video, gallery sorting, gallery filters, and lightbox slideshow. Gallery sorting and filters, those come with the default plugin, and then video and light show will be extra plugins you have to install. And then the next level up, you get these extensions. And then the last two pricing options, we get all the extensions for business and agency. So that's how we get extensions. And you can come back here. If you have the appropriate account, you can install these just by clicking install and activate. This will install a separate plugin. Not a huge fan of that. I like it if it was just a tick box that was made available if you have a certain account type but they must have done this for a specific reason, and this is just how it is. So we can add zoom functionality like we have on Amazon, for example. You hover over a product image, even WooCommerce now, hover over a product image, and then it'll zoom up so you can see the larger version of the image. You can give the users the ability to download images, galleries, and albums with the download option. The XIF add-on allows you to display metadata on the image. The XIF data usually comes from the camera you took the picture with. So you can add that data to the image itself. You can have albums of your galleries. So if you have a bunch of family galleries and some vacation galleries, you want to separate them, you can put them into their own albums. So that's pretty handy. You can convert galleries to a slider using this option here. The Lightbox slideshow allows you to create a slideshow in the Lightbox rather than having someone click on the arrows to go to the next image or the previous image. The password protect allows you to password protect your galleries. You can add a watermark to your galleries. You can deep link for SEO, meaning each item in the gallery will have its own URL. So if you're a photographer and you want your images to rank in image search, for example, so someone finds it and hopefully buys it from you, this is a great add-on to have. Right-click protection allows people to not right-click on the images and try to download them. You can use advanced short codes, which allows you to display galleries without creating pages for them. This is a speed up option that we use with short pixel. And here's the video option. So I'm going to install a bunch of these and we're going to take a look at what they do. And there we have it. Instead of installing a bunch of them, I installed all of them. So let's take a look at what we have. Let's go back to our gallery. Let's refresh. Now we have all those messages that said pro version or extension or whatever it said. Those are all gone now. And under general, let's see if we have, we have the slider option, which was one of the extensions. Let's change that to slider. And I'm going to just update this gallery. Come out here and refresh. Now our gallery is a slider. One image per slide. Let's change that. Let's change the size to medium, so not so small. Let's add a thumbnail navigator. Image size thumbnail. That'll do because we changed the image size to medium. So the thumbnail size for the images will be fine. Let's crop the image so that it fits in a specific space. 
and I'm going to add center mode infinite loop is fine. I'm going to show five slides and let's save that. There's a lot more options there. I know you can read, so I can read them all for you. But here we have a much better looking slider. So that's how we can switch to a slider. I'm going to switch this back to the custom grid because that's my absolute favorite. I love having different image sizes. Let's go to video. This allows us to add a video, which is pretty awesome. I'm just going to get a video link from my YouTube channel. And now with my video link, I can click on any one of these images, scroll down. We have new video URL options here. You can insert a video URL, which is uh, one hosted somewhere. It can be a YouTube video or Vimeo video or self-hosted, meaning it's on this website itself. So we're going to put in my YouTube link right there. Click on Save and Close. Click on Update Gallery. Come out here and refresh. Now we have a play button on this image down here. If I click on that, and then you can play this video. This video is from the Plugin Killer series I currently have running on the channel. This is where we get rid of simple plugins with bits of code so we can save plugin installs on our websites. Medulla is not a simple plugin. This is not something that would be in the Plugin Killer series because it has so many features, it would take forever to code it, and so it's better to just use the plugin that they've created for us. But this video plays as any video would. So that's fantastic. Let's close that up. We can change the colors of this play button as well. So if the white does not stand out, we can change the color to green or red. Red's the YouTube play color. You can change the size to, let's make this 60. Update that. And now it's much bigger and more visible. You can also upload your own custom icon by clicking here instead of having the default play button that Modula creates. Under speed up, we have these options here that we did not have before. For compression, it's set to default. We can have it either enabled or disabled. For thumbnail compression, we can choose the type of compression. They're defined down below here. And lightbox compression, you can choose the type as well. And what the default actually is, we can see on the right hand side over here. If we want to change our defaults, we can go to settings. We have options we did not have before because we installed a bunch of extensions. The speed up settings allows us to change the default. So compression on is going to be our default. Let's make this glossy and lossy. I'm not saying you should use those options. I'm just changing them. So when I come back to here and refresh, you'll see that these three on the side here change. So let's refresh. And we see now it's enabled glossy and lossy. And those are the defaults now. And these are short pixel image compressions right here that you're not paying extra for, they come with that extension with Modula. The EXIF data allows you to enable EXIF data to show on your images. This is the data it will show, the camera type, the lens, shutter speed, aperture, focal length, ISO, and date. This would be relevant for people who are photographers and who are selling photographs to other people who are photographers or pro image editors who want to know what these things are for their editing. If you click on the pencil for any one of these images, we can import or include that data right here. If it's not imported directly from the image metadata, which it sometimes is, then you can enter it manually right over here. Now we're gonna check out download. This allows people to download images. We can turn the download here and I believe this downloads the entire gallery. We're gonna test this in just a second. We can create a custom zip name. So right now it's this gallery title. These percents are so the, the plugin knows this is a variable and it's gonna insert the, the gallery title in here. In our case, the gallery is named Inspiration, and I think that is fine. I'm going to click on Update Gallery, come back out here and refresh, and there should be a download button now somewhere. There it is, Download All Images. So it is for all the images in the gallery. Now we have a zip file called Inspiration. Let's open this, and we have all of our images right there in thumbnail form. 150 by 150. Pretty sure we can change the size. So yeah, download image size right here. Thumbnail, medium, large, full. So you can change what size is downloaded. And then you can 
have the appropriate download that you want to set up for your visitors or your furry customers because this can also be password protected. So if you combine the password protect option with the download, you could have people pay you to be able to download images and then you just send them the, the password to download. You can add a password. This is the password that anybody would enter to download. So let's just say, I don't know, picture download is the password. So they have to enter that to get access to the gallery. You can also have an email address. If you enter something here, they have to enter that as well. And here we can enter a message. This will basically instruct them what to do. What's the magic word? And it's picture underscore download. So I'm gonna copy that. Update gallery. Because I'm the admin, it might just show it. It doesn't. Good. So what's the magic word? Paste our password, click on enter. And now we have our password, or sorry, our gallery appear after we enter our password and we can click on download all images. So that's how you could sell these potentially using the Medulla plugin. Could turn that off just in case we refresh later, I forget the password. We are now going to check out Zoom. Gonna turn that on, enable Zoom. This is gonna keep all its basic settings and see how that looks. There it is on the right hand side, there's a Zoom. So that's the default settings. I also just noticed there's a download all link right here. There's a download link on each individual image. So you can download all of them, click on this button, or you can download individual ones by clicking on the option that's on the image itself for the download extension. So let's type, or let's make this uh, a lens, and let's make it extra large. That's good. Let's see how this looks. Click on an image. There, now we have what I think is a much better zoom effect instead of having it up in the corner. It zooms right where you're looking. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's very cool. So that's our zoom options. There are more options here. Just try them out. Just, just change them, save it, and see how it looks. If you like it, that's great. If you don't, change it to something else. Really can't do too much wrong. Let's go down to watermark. Skipped over a couple. We'll go back. We can use custom settings for a watermark. We can upload our own custom image. So let's see if I can find a logo. Oh, right here, space, look at that. Let's use that as a watermark. I'm gonna put it in the bottom right. And then we have to click on watermark right here, which is going to probably use some PHP to watermark all of our images. Don't have to update. It should have watermarked them in the background. If I click on the full image, there's our watermark in the bottom right, right there. And now if I go back, and I don't want that watermark anymore. I can click on remove watermark and now it should be removed. Let's refresh again, click on our image and the watermark is still there, but we're using Chrome, which has a nasty habit of caching every image. So let's go incognito, click on the image. Now it's not showing the watermarked one down here. So the watermark is removed when we click remove watermark. But to make this work, we have to have this option turned on. It basically means that it backs up the originals. So if you decide to not have a watermark in the future, it's gonna just replace the watermarked ones with the originals. So that's the watermark options. Let's go to slideshow. Turn this on. Who doesn't love a good slideshow? This is in the light box itself. So let's actually turn this off first. Update, make sure we're on our most recent setup here. Refresh. So if I click here, this is our light box area. There's no slideshow. You have to click the arrows to go to the next tab or the next image. And we have the slideshow turned on and let's autoplay and let's reduce this time so we can see the effect faster and update. Come back out here and refresh. When I click any one of these to open the light box, it should start playing them. And there's the next one. I'm not touching anything. There's the next one. So we have a slideshow now of our images instead of us clicking on them, which might be what you need. That's the slideshow option. Let's go to miscellaneous. See what this is, enable protection, or the right click protection and the deep linking. So let's click on update gallery. Uh, actually, let's turn off protection first, then update gallery. So if I come out here and I refresh, I can right click and go to save link as, and this will allow us to save the image. We see the name up here and we see JPEG image. So we can download the image by right clicking and downloading. Now if I turn this on, refresh again, 
and right click. I'm trying to right click, but it won't let me. Right click is not working. Right click's not working in here either. But the thing is, you can still create a screenshot. So you could go into the gallery and just take screenshots of the images and then save the screenshots. A lot of people, when you add just one step of making things one step more difficult, they won't do it. So some people might want to right click all these images and save them. But if they're going to have to screenshot all of them and then save them, they might not do that because it's a little more work. And the Enable Deep Linking makes it so that there's unique links for each item in your gallery. When you add this name here, this Medulla Gallery, this is actually part of the URL for these links. And we want to make sure, like it says here, that our filters are set to all as the default. So if I go to filters, our default active filter right here is all. So you want to have that turned on. Or we have to turn on reload page on filter click. So either turn that on or have the active filter, the default set to all. And then that will allow deep linking to work. And this will basically create, like I said, unique links that are indexable by search engines so people can find them in image results and it's much better for SEO. Over here on the left, we have options we didn't have before. If I click on albums, we can create a new album. Let's just call this inspiration again. And we can add galleries to these albums. We only have one gallery. If you had multiple, you could pick multiple. And now those become part of the album. And we have a similar number of settings that we do for the galleries themselves that also work with the albums. We can have the custom grid again, which is my favorite. If we have multiple albums, we could resize them however we want. And we can add this to a page. Just gonna add it to the same page. Let's duplicate this. Update. Come back out here and refresh. Now we have our album down below and we have only our default settings. This would be laid out just like the galleries up here if we set it all up. And then you can go through and see all of the images in each gallery as part of the album. We're not gonna go through all these settings because we saw pretty much all of them throughout this video. And so that's the gallery option. And on the left hand side here under import export, we have the ability to import and export galleries. We can also migrate galleries. And next up is watching my plugin killer playlist up here where we replace plugins with code on our site. Medulla is not a plugin we can replace with code because it's just so big and feature rich. It's not one we're easily replacing. But if you want to reduce the plugin load on your site, check out this playlist right here. And make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass in WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.